Fasting doesn't kill people. And in fact, I ask you to fast all the time when I ask you to come for a stress test. Well, you don't come on the stress test and die. So we are used to fasting and we do it. And when you're sick, you fast, don't you? When you have the flu, you don't eat. When your pets are sick, they don't eat. You don't see your dog running and eating his food when he's sick. He stays in the corner and he does not eat. If you put in about 100 calories of food into your body, it takes about 60 to 70 calories of your body to digest that food and then you get a little excess. So eating is an energy consuming activity. So the first thing that's gonna happen is that you, you, you stop eating. In the first 12 hours, your body's gonna say, hmm, no food coming out. It's gonna wipe up all the glycogen that is in your liver and in your muscles. So for the first 12 hours, I'm not gonna use the fat. I'm going to use up my glycogen stores. How am I going to feel? I'm going to feel okay, unless I'm a junkie. Then I'm going to want to eat, and you know, that's junkiness. Because your sugar will never drop. I'm going to say that again, your sugar will never drop. You can fast for seven days, your blood sugar will come down, but you will not become hypoglycemic and have an attack, unless you're on insulin or you're taking diabetes medications. After 12 hours, what happens? You get gluconeogenesis. That means new glucose is being made, gluconeogenesis. Where does that glucose come from that comes into the bloodstream? Where does it come from? It comes from protein. But it's not the protein in the muscles. Protein is always being turned over in your body. But this time, the protein that's normally going to turn over turns into glucose. So your glucose level is maintained for another 12 hours or so. During this next 12 hours, there's a small increase in ketosis. The only way fat can come into utilization is the insulin levels must drop. When your insulin level is high, you store energy. When your insulin levels are low, you pull energy out of the fats. So the fats start being devoured, the fat gets converted to triglycerides and fatty acids. The fatty acids flood the bloodstream. You can't utilize fatty acids, so they go to your liver. And in the liver, your fatty acids get converted to ketones. There's two ketones, beta-hydroxybutyric acid and acetoacetic acid. These two ketones now go up. Ketones can be utilized by the body. And this is the great breakthrough that I want to tell you, that ketones can be utilized by every cell of your body, including your brain. You are told that the brain is an obligate glucose utilizer can only utilize glucose. It's absolutely wrong. 